Today we're going to be looking at exponential functions. And exponential functions are a group of functions known as transcendental functions. And by transcendental functions, we mean that they are not algebraic. They don't use the traditional addition, subtraction, multiplication, division in order to solve. We've got to use some other processes along the way. And that's really what we're going to be studying in this chapter. First thing we're going to look at is an exponential function. And really, an exponential function just has the unknown in the exponent. The unknown is going to be in the exponent. And it's going to look like the format f of x is equal to a raised to the x, where a cannot be 1 and x is any real number. And the reason that a cannot be 1 is that if I have f of x is equal to 1 to the x, I plug in any value for x, 1 raised to anything is just 1. This we know as being a constant function, which is not exponential. So the first thing we want to be able to do is evaluate exponential functions. And we're often going to use a calculator for this. So in this first example, f of x is equal to 2 raised to the x plus 1, where x is 7.643. We're going to plug in 7.643 wherever we see an x, and then simplify. And at this point, since I don't know what 2 to the 8.643 is going to be, I'll plug that into my calculator and you get something in the range of 399.76. See my little note beneath that? Be sure to keep your exponents in parentheses. That's especially true if you have the older version of the TI-84 or earlier calculators. If you have the newer version, the exponents are automatically made for you and you don't have to worry about parentheses then. So that's the algebraic view, if you want to think of it in terms of an exponential function. Now we want to look at the graphical view, which are the characteristics of the exponential function graph. We've already stated that we're looking at a function that is y equals a to the x, the parent function. And if we look at that, and if we were to create a little xy chart and plug in some values, we know that whenever I plug in an x as being 0, a raised to 0 is going to be equal to 1. So I know one point of my graph is going to be 0, 1, which is the y-intercept. The other characteristics that are important to know about an exponential function is that it is continuous, which means you can draw it without lifting up your pencil, and it increases from left to right which is from negative infinity to infinity. So if we graph our exponential, it'll look something like that. There is a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So we'll draw that in right there. If we have a positive x, and in other words, y equals a to the x, the graph is going to rise to the right. And if I have a negative x, it is going to be a y-axis reflection, which means the graph is going to decrease as you go to the right. The shifts are the same as our regular functions. If I have something in the exponent, the h indicates the horizontal shift, and it's in the opposite direction. So if this was a plus 3, it would actually be 3 units to the left, not 3 units to the right. If I had a value in the back, which is my vertical shift, going up or down, if that's a plus, it goes up. If it's down, it's negative. And then finally, in terms of asymptotes, we've got a horizontal asymptote as y is equal to 0. 
and that's the case for the parent functions. But if we've got transformations, then the asymptotes and the y-intercepts are all affected by that as well. So for example, if I had y equals a to the x plus 2, that is going to be a horizontal shift. If I had y equals a to the x plus 2, where my plus 2 is in the back, that is going to be a vertical shift. So this is going to be vertical. This is going to be horizontal. And if I were to graph out that vertical shift, everything is going to be raised two units. So my parent function was originally at 0, 1. It's now going to be at 0, 3. And my horizontal asymptote that was originally at y equals 0 is now going to be at y equals 2.